Hello everybody, Reggie Time here and this is the third video in my um, series of playing some 14L and 16L on Pop Bombers um, as we try to continue to read with our bankroll after the PLO5 bombshell that hit us. Um, we've done well since last video, I can't remember what we ended on but we've got each account now up to 390. At its lowest point it was like th just over 300 I think so we've we've had a good week, we've um, been putting some decent volume in or decent volume by my standards in and then um, yeah we're getting there and um i feel i'm playing well still could do with running a little bit better but uh playing well game selecting well and if we're doing all of those things both of those things then we're going to be fine please do hit the like on the video it really does help it do well if you did takes two seconds to like it you never have to watch it again but if you hit the like it it doesn't hurt you and it helps me so that'd be nice if you could do that please do share join the facebook group all of those things and um, the reason we're not playing straight away here is i just wanted to show you uh, the, what the traffic's like in this club it's currently 14.58 on a saturday afternoon and these are all the tables that are running just at 40 and 60 nl so there's tons and tons and tons of tables running um so it's really not difficult to get volume in this club i mean look it's just endless there's loads i mean some of those tables are empty but most of them have got people on and then um, yeah it's it's out of control the volume on this set sometimes towards the bottom here look there's a lot of oh that's hang on whoa let's just go back to here because we've, we've not got the filters on so let's um i thought it was a little bit endless. right so here we are from the 60 game so we'll scroll back up as you can see there's just tables and tables and tables and tables and tables um so that, yeah there's definitely tons and tons of action uh if you're a uk player i'd say from like seven in the morning through till six at night um you're not going to struggle to get good tables so i just want to show you that bit just at the start of the video i'm going to um Pause the video now and next thing you'll see is me at three tables, hopefully about to crush. So here we are, you haven't missed a hand. We've just started now, we have um, 14 l 14 l 16 l table with some high VP players at every table and we're straight into it in the big blind against the 72-16 and we're going to make um, quite a sizable squeeze here to about maybe eight I think. 20 blinds, there's 72 players opened to 4x, 72 VPIP, and we've had two callers, so we'll be very keen to try and get this heads up if we can. Um, it could be the most explosive start to video we've ever had because we're going to be snap calling off versus the 72 VPIP guy and get it in really good, offering the opportunity to run it three times. Don't really care what he does, but we'll give him the chance to run it three, he can decide. That's one hold for us. One one. Put a queen for the sweat. No. So we win two of the three. So we don't quite um capitalise on all of our equity there. But um never mind. Here he goes again. Let's hope he doesn't bust. Eight queen versus a set. Yeah, he's going to bust. That's unfortunate. Well, at least we got our share from him, I guess. I guess that's something at least. Um, is this table worth staying at? 23, 16, 34, 10. Yeah, of course it is. Still worth staying at. If this 40 slash 9 player decides it's not for him anymore, then we'll have a rethink. But for the time being, we can just plod on. Save the knowledge. I mean, we're not at a very aggressive table. I mean, we have people that are 3 betting 4%, 3%, 5%, 3%. So we're going to get to see a lot of flops and hopefully utilise what you expect to be quite a useful post up advantage against these guys. Um. It means we can continue using our like larger opening sizes 
um, knowing that we're not going to be punished as much by aggressive three betters. Whereas at this table, maybe we, when it forces us in the button, we won't be quite so keen to 3.5 exit. Maybe we'll just 2.5 exit because we have two regulars in the blind. Uh, this guy's only 3 betting 5%, but it's still. Um, you'd expect that's going to be a little bit more than 5% from the blind scratch, it's overall figure and this guy's 3 betting 9% so just be aware of our surroundings this dude here 44, 30 on this table he's 3 betting 10% over a decent sample so again at this table we might just be 2.5 x in from the button but um, it's a good table though for sure because um, we have this guy who's got a lot of money, the 50 V pip, and we have this guy who's got decent stack with the 44 V pip. Um, this guy only falls to three bets, 42 percent. So we're not going to three bet King Jack off. Um, I've been doing a little bit of like thinking about my three bet strategy, and it's very rare you see somebody with a high fall to three bet in these games. So I, um, I'm going pretty deep polarized with my three betting. And I'm um, going quite big, quite big and depolarised is my current 3-bet strategy. Unless I see something that tells me I can get out of line, someone's got like a 60 odd percent 4 to 3-bet, then um, we'll do something a bit different. I'm going to call twice here and fold over. When we call twice here, are people going to triple off very often with worse than King Jack? Um, seems unlikely. Maybe that ace is the one time they maybe do it, because it's like such a good scare card. Uh, but also maybe it just slows him down and he just like checks down now with a worse jack that he was value betting. be interesting if he bets again. You can have some like ASX combos. Like ASX of hearts. I mean, he's representing sets and ace jack here, isn't he, when he uses his sizing. Maybe 8-7-2. So like, how often does he have those hands versus... Um, He's not valuating a jack, so what are his bluffs, I guess we need to think about here. Because I don't think he's valuating a jack. Um, the 9 improves some of his flop. Straight like 8, 7's improved. Queen 10 still missed, though. We don't block Queen 10 at all. Um, no, we can't, we can't use another time bank, so we've got to make our decision. We're going to call. Ah, he had the king ace. I didn't think he'd be like double barreling ace king on that turn, so... I guess we could start slipping some more check raises in versus this guy both versus both his C bets and his double barrels because I mean yeah he's got bailed out on the river there but I don't think that's a particularly good double barrel from him. Um And when he like polarizes a river, I didn't think he'd choose that size with just like an ace, so I mean he did a few things there that I wouldn't expect a regular to do. That's not to say they're good or bad, but he did things that I wasn't expecting, so something to bear in mind. I mean, the C bet, man, is this what it is? Like, don't hit the C bet. But, like, the turn nine is going to be way better for our range and his range, but he still barrels on it, um, which I don't think can be good. And then I think his river value bet's probably really good once he realises that I'm pretty capped. I really do like his bet size on the river. Going to be going with the ISO here with the King Deuce on the button. Hope the regulars behind us just get out of the way. Now we'll be ISO in the Queen Jack here too. King Deuce hasn't turned out too well so far. Not going to see bet multi way with a hand that has like. Really bad equity when called. We've been squeezed here by a 40 slash 9, so I've been in a comfortable spot there with Queens. Never mind Queen Jack. Um, this guy just leads out for pot on the turn, and we still have nothing, so it's not a difficult spot for us. This dude calls a large bet out with the big out of the big blind on that. I'm not really sure what's going on here with this fellow. Maybe he's had a weak queen that's now bought it up. Who knows? Don't think he'd be bluffing very often for that particular size on that run out. King 
Jack. I think we'll let that go versus under the gun, even though it's a fish. I think we'll let it go versus him. My best chance of winning this part is now, isn't it? So we'll just make a big race pre-flop and we take it down. Wouldn't make too much sense for this player. I know this player, by the way. I'm not going to give any details away about him, but I know him. It wouldn't make too much sense for him to bet that turn. But I like that river bet with whatever he's got because um, it just shows a three. <laughs> uh, because given the way that the opponent, his opponent played the hand, it looked like he couldn't really have um, couldn't have a flush very often. And then he like snap checks the river too. It's a good show too, showing like the total air ball. And that had to be an air ball, didn't it? With when you're showing the three of clubs there, that just has to be an air ball. Green 10, we're just going to bet pretty big twice on this board, and then um, make a decision on the river on how to proceed if we get there we're against one or more opponents. We got there against two opponents after two largest bets were called. I'd probably be in try and show down mode. Don't know if we're going for a third street of value unless we improved on the river. Again, pretty much same as before. Best chance of winning this pot with the 5-3 is now. So we'll try and do just that. Not a big fan of this table. Now the fishing up here is left. Well, we do have this dude who's... Like, we'd rather be on this side of him, but we're not going to seat switch. And it's nice to be on this side of a 44-7 who's got like a huge stack. So like this player makes this position really, this seat really good, and this player makes it less good. But it's better than the other way around. Um, do we want a three bet? I think we do. I mean, guy's pretty tight and passive, but it is queen suited. Uh, if we get a four bet, we're just going to be sad and fold. We snap calls. We get a uh, moderate flop. We're going to kick it off with a C bet of about six. Fold to a race, and then only barrel on like black turn cards. King X. Ace X. Maybe we check an ace. Better ten. Hopefully we won't be put to that decision. Oh, we get raised, which is... I mean, if he's raising a jack here, he's obviously making a pretty big mistake. Uh, it's hard to see what plus he can have. I mean, a lot of the players in this site will like, just raise pocket nines here. And then, as I've found out to my custom model on occasion, not fold when jammed on. Um, so whatever it is, what it is, we... Had a good C bet, a three bet spot. We had a flop that we need to see bet with a decent frequency, and then we got raised. So, and we were kind of not in it. Oh, no, this place gone too. So we are absolutely done with this table now. I do like to get involved in some 60 and L tables, but they need to be the right makeup. Well, all my tables do 60 and L, 40 you know, whatever. I'm playing any site. If I'm playing. 10 and somewhere to make a video. I still need the tables to be right for me. Our friend here gets it in with the best hand. Is he going to hold? He does. Good for him.
shall leave this table there and move on to the next one. Might as well be just three players. How's that one looking? 44, 28, 44. Looks pretty fucking good to me. First table we click and we get on with 240 plus V pips. Can't argue with that. And two players at this table are pretty active in the three betting departments, so at this table we probably won't be going with the 3.5x opens. Probably much more likely to be going with the 2.5x. Go first hand min race and then an instant three bet. So, I mean, they could just both have good hands, um, but I'm not surprised to see very different action straight away given the, the dynamics of the two players based on their stats, of course. Not, I mean, I don't know what dynamic there's between them, we'll just join the table, but the interaction between their stats doesn't surprise me. So we're probably going to just lay in the reeds at this table a little bit. It seems like there's going to be plenty of action done for us. We're not going to need to do the pulling ourselves. We can just lay in the reeds, sit, wait for, for good spots to turn up rather than um, force the action ourselves. Just sit and hopefully wait for some good spots and hopefully they'll come sooner rather than later. And we're still going to open our normal ranges on the button, of course. dunked into the pot this is going to be a very aggressive table so we are very much going to be just laying in the reef we're just tighten up our ranges to um just basically at this table my strategy right now is be a fucking knit and just wait for these guys to um not respect the fact that you're being a knit and just overplay hands that is the strategy It is going to feel a little bit like I'm getting run over at these tables. So I don't always enjoy them because it does feel sometimes like you're just being run over. But sometimes you've just got to let people run you over. Um, or just jump all aboard the variance train and just be, get in there and be willing to gamble with them with some very marginal holdings. Uh, I hate calling out the small blind. Especially in this dynamic. So we'll go with the three bet. And I think we might just pile it on him. If he, if he four bets, we might just pile our eights in here. He folds. Which makes me feel distinctly more comfortable than having to five bet jam pocket eight so if i think it's the right play i won't hesitate from doing it and i think it would be the right play against this particular player fish in the blinds here so we're going to try a very loose open with our seven six suited on the middle table we've been instantly three bet by this day we're not going to call but we are going to four bet it's just going to be one of those tables, I think, where this sort of shit goes off. <laughs> wow, that's a really small five bet. King Queen's just such a bad hand to defend versus... Oh no, hang on, we're on the button. Did not realise we were on the button. I thought we were small wee big for some reason. I'm just going to call and just hope to flop absolute gin. Wow. I would so like to have um, team checked there so we could bet. I mean, we're just going to have to fold now. We got a good shot two overs backed off flush draw, but um, sadly, this table is just going to be one where we're just going to have to just in there and gamble with these guys because they're just not going to they're not going to let the pressure up pre-flop we knew that when we joined they're not going to let the pressure up and um we can't just crumble like that 
I mean, maybe we could just... Have, I don't think we can six-bet jam king-queen there and ever hope to be good. But yeah, this table could be super, super spewy. It filling up a little bit does take some of the pressure off. It, like, it reduces the intensity a little bit. Maybe we can just fold the king-queen there, but it's just so small. We're getting, like, such a good price pre-flop. Uh, queen 10 suited here versus a small isolation of a limb but he is only half stacked this guy's going to come along for sure isn't he we know the limp is coming along sadly we completely miss looking forward to calling three streets versus this two oh it's not even in the fucking pot never mind pay attention Reg here with our jack I was going to bet twice with our jack and that was something we're just going to check and try and show it down spear drip is not ideal we lose to a queen we lose to what shit tons of jacks still we lose to flushes we lose to 10-9 yeah not a lot to talk about there really Both of these players are almost for sure going to be losing players. They're just the types that fucking take people down with them, aren't they? They're like kamikaze pilots. Uh, sometimes they're just going to take three stacks off you in no time whatsoever. Um, and other times then, you know, they're just going to dump on you. Led into here. We have two overs and a second nut flush draw. Don't think we need to raise. Maybe we could raise. If he bets small on this turn, I think we can raise. If he bets big, I think we can just fold. If he checks, we're going to check back. He bets kind of big, so. We are just getting run over at the minute. That's just the way it is. When you play against um, bad players and you don't, you know, make hands, you are just going to, like, you're going to hemorrhage red line. That's what you're going to do. And that's what we're doing right now. We're probably already down, what, 30 odd dollars? Um, arguably could have made some mistakes. But, um, yeah, you just, you need to make hands. You're not going to outplay any of these guys by, like, making them make any big folds. You're not going to do that. You, you need to be attacking the Rangers when they're weak, when they're displaying weakness, not when they're displaying strength. That's clearly way out of line. We're not going to be doing an awful lot of folding too when we have position. And we are going to be... We're going to bet this flop. He's going to raise and we're going to jam. That is what's going to happen here. Because I'm going to bet small enough to hopefully induce some raises. And then we're going to pile over them. That is what's happening here. Okay, he just calls. If you check raises now, it's going to really suck. Can we go with an over bet here? I think we can. I mean, if he's running some trap with like Ace King or something, then he's going to get us for it all, which is what it looks like is happening, but yeah, never mind. We might get there. We've got enough outs. A7. Sweet baby Jesus and the orphans. Now in terms of what I run it twice. Yeah, go on. That's a brick. That's not a brick though. Wow, didn't expect him to I mean I knew we could have some like some traps with like ace king, etc., but didn't think he would have the A7. And then take that line with it, like just check race. 
over a turnover bet. Wow. I'm not sure who played that hand worse us or him. I'm pretty sure he played it worse than us, but who knows? Who fucking knows? The boys are gambling. The boys are gambling. I mean, this guy's just out of control. I would argue that these stats aren't reflecting his current status. He is just out of control. You too can get in games with these types of players. Just PM me on Facebook or email me or even use the very rare method of contacting me via Twitter. That'd be nice. Naturally, this table's going to be taking most of our focus for the for the time that we spend at it. Even we saw our friend here just like triple off before. We're going to give him a chance to put a move on us. Unless the board changes dramatically, then we're very likely just going to check call three streets here. Okay, we're going to go with the very loose open from the under the gun into the east fish pig blind and again we get punished for it immediately wow this is going to bet and then raise so that's very different we were just looking to block, like just check call down versus said but now it's gone like check bet raise after bet call flop wow how's this for a situation at this table please work out for me please work out for me Come on, dude, do your thing. Oh, that's a set. That is a set. And this is going to be me betting absurdly small. Because I think betting small is better than just checking here. We can't really bet big because we block a lot of stuff. Don't really want to check. We'd rather just bet small and then... I mean, this guy's just off the charts aggressive, so he's going to call here. Hope he's got a 10. That'd be sweet. Instantly checks back. So now we know he's weak. But I'm going to go with an overbet. He's just trying to target his 10x. And last time we overbet, um, we didn't have anything. So hopefully he remembers that and reacts accordingly. Jones with 10-7 and we take down a big one. And now it gets interesting because we're very deep with him now at 200 blinds deep. We're going to just go down to min raising buttons because as we said he is out of control and we do not want to get blown off our hands too much. Versus him. And maybe he just with min raising it encourages him to flat more than 3 bet. I was going to make a small raise for value here if you bet, but he didn't, so we're just going to pot it and hope he looks it up with any pair. So I have not seen for a second I've played well so far during this video, but what I have done is I've identified, I've just joined a table, you've seen it all, I've joined a table, I instantly identified the kind of dynamic I expected to see at the table, and I've tried to like make some preemptive adjustments um which have worked out because obviously you know we've just like flopped a top set and, and stacked somebody but um which you know isn't the most difficult thing in the fucking world to do but um nevertheless irrespective of that it does i i think i do like i do think that that better than like a lot of other players a lot of players just turn up play don't make plans don't like assess the table dynamic um and i think it's something i do more than most and perhaps better than 
lots of my peers who maybe struggle to win in these games. Um, I will make plans. I will. I will like have. I like, think I'll try and devise strategies to um, capitalise most on the mistakes I think my opponents might be capable of making, etc. And do we value better our ten here? And we can bet small for value, like a dollar. Caught by worse tens. Get caught by eight x maybe. Yeah, I'm not pretending that my strategy's been super sick and it caused him to, to stack off because um end of the day they do turn trips in a three bet pot and I had top boat, so let's not pretend that and that isn't the message I'm trying to get out there. But I am pleased that I managed to like preempt the way the games are gonna go and was like automatically in the mode. I didn't need to like, wait to see things happening. I was kind of in the mode for um for what I thought might happen and in the right frame of mind for it before we even played a hand and I think that's like quite important and it's quite a nice like soft skill to have that lots of other players they're not really paid that much attention to what's going on around them they just like pay attention to their own hand and how that interacts with the board etc this total nits race under the gun so the ace four is going to go right in the bin I mean, I'm nitty. Like, 19, 15. I'm a fucking big nit, but fuck me. 14, 12. What are we playing full ring, fella? We're playing full ring, sir. Sadly, that player's left. We were going to have a lot of fun with him. But, um, he left, so never mind. Now we've got a question, is this table worth staying at? We have... Reg, reg, shit reg, and like a player that's used stats are aggressive, but we haven't really seen that much of it so far. I think we're probably just going to leave this table because I'm, even though like having a position on this like loose aggressive dude is no bad thing, I think the overall makeup of the table, I just think it can do better than in this club. I mean, this would be if you had this table on poker stars or party poker or whatever, you'd be delighted with it. You'd be like, oh, I've got a really good table here. Uh, but looking at this table, like through the through the the glasses of pot bombers, then then we can just do better. It's a good table, but we could do better. It's like I like a Big Mac, but I prefer a Whopper. Or you know, to use the same analogy, just throwing out some different takeaway names. You know, I do really enjoy a nice stuffed crust Domino's, but it's not a patch of a stuffed crust pepperoni passion from um, Pizza Hut, for example. And that's what this is. <coughs> this is a Big Mac in a world of Whoppers. Bars now, but the tables too. To be fair, this table is also really turned quite badly now. Two relatively aggressive players to our direct left, and not that much money to our direct right. Eight dollars, two dollars. So, um, <coughs> how close to the end of the video are we? Thirty-five. We're going to pause it, and well, we'll have a look at the lobby, and if the games look, if we can get into two tables quickly. That looks decent, we won't pause the video, but if we can't then we'll be forced to pause. You know, your 60 no table with a 15 and a 60 V pip, so straight into this one and delighted to be. Right, what do we do here against our friend? Been a limp. 4x ISO cold call. I think we're gonna go with the um Bluff squeeze. Just 
just for the nose of a nit. Can't see him getting out of line with, with his with his four bets. If he four bets, I'm just going to give him a hell of a lot of credit. He doesn't. <coughs> he doesn't four bet. He just calls, and hopefully, I'm going to take advantage of my nit image here and um, get some folds. <coughs> there are some turns we can barrel if he calls. Maybe. <coughs> excuse me. Maybe we don't need to barrel now. Um, it's going to be an interesting position if when I check back this turn, which I'm going to do, and he leads Brick Rivers for pot, which I think he'll probably do, makes it quite interesting. Maybe he doesn't pot this river. I mean, does he have much 7x? Maybe we just lose at showdown, or maybe sometimes we just win at showdown too. We win at showdown. That'll please him. Sorry, mate. <coughs> Not sorry though. Sorry but not sorry. We got away with one there, didn't we? Sorry not sorry, sir. I know you can take it. You're a good man. You can take it. Let's remove these tables. I normally just go for the one with the lowest number of players and look at them first. But um, when they've all got five, then I guess we can't do that. Uh, that one, well, it's just been taken anyway. Don't think I would have taken the seat, though. Um, this one. Let's have a look. Oh, that's the one we just looked at, that book of things. Don't do it to me again. Don't put me back at the same time. So we've got here 36, 43, 58. Ah, that's the one we just left. Oh, is it the one we just left? No, I don't think it is. Or is it that same one from a different perspective? Could be. Anyway. I'm going to play with $2, so fuck that. Maybe we should start our own table in the moment. I don't want to be dancing around all the tables. 60 slash 1. If, you win, if the 61 slash 1 holds, we're having the seat. So we'll take the seat for now. Oh, Christ, I'm going to get the fucking table. Come on, Reggie. Second time I've done that in two videos. Um, right, okay, so, what are we going to do? 46.15 with money. Uh, do I want to sit to the right of this guy and have to put up with this guy? I think I do. I think that's what we want to be doing here. Sit to the right of the guy with the bigger stack. Uh, this guy's got like a 58% full. Three bets, so we're going to go with a three-bet bluff here. With a reasonable hand to do it with. This is like as we talked about it earlier, where I was going to be um, mostly depolarizing against people with like low four to three bets, but this guy's got a nearly sixty percent four to three bet. Um, we just bet very small here on this board. And we take it down. We river a flush here on a double paired board, so we're just going to check fold it. Open the limp, open limp here from the guy that everyone wants to play a pot against. Kind of, we can't really call this against his stack, but given the fact we know he's coming along, we almost can. The problem is that neither of these guys, if they were both 100 blinds deep, this would be a trivial call. But because they're not, we'll just pass it up. And then Minra is from a pretty loose aggressive player under the gun. Well, 
cut up as it happens because we're playing five handed. Uh, sorry, not cut up the hijack, low jack. Ah, fuck knows. Been a fucking race of early east position. Um, we're going to bump it up. Need the ace nine suited. This guy can't be too strong. He's at 2140, he just flats the min raise on the button. So, kind of looking at that as if I just heads up. We know this guy isn't 3 bit in, it's a 60 slash 1, so we can go for the set mine and hit it. And now it's just a question of do we check raise or not? I think on this board, I mean, on a dry board like this, heads up against a regular, to trivial check. But in a multi way pot on a dry board where he's not going to be incentivized to see it anywhere near as much because it's. He's not going to expect his bluffs to get through, then. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Makes it a bit more tempting to donk. We're just going to call and allow him to keep getting, allow him to keep calling and... Um, hopefully build the pot multi-way rather than, like, blow people off the pot. This guy's going to check a lot here after he gets called in two spots. If he doesn't check, I think he's going to be really strong and we can consider raising. <clears throat> I don't think he barrels like I mean he barrels six five and things like that here maybe. But he doesn't like I think he's just got the king a lot or air a lot. I'm just gonna call again. I wanna try and keep this guy in the pot. If I raise here I might blow them both away. And we don't want that, that'd be a disaster. The jack's not great because King Jack gets there, but um, obviously we're not folding. I mean, obviously worried about pocket fours and King Jack, and that's it. Not worried about any other hands. He leads. Now, if he raises here, then I would set could be in big trouble. This has gone bet. If he raises, then we might have to make a really big fold. Wow! Uh, fuck me. I mean, does he ever worse? Does he ever raise a hand that isn't a full house here? I'm worried about pocket fours and king jack. But it looks like he could have a king, which means he doesn't have king jack very often. I think we just have to call. King seven, that is delightful. That is a, is an <coughs> interesting river race from him there. If we'd have raised, we wouldn't have made any more money. Um, so we've killed this table straight away because this guy's got two dollars left now, and then we're up against like a weak reg and a. Uh, don't know how to describe this sort of player. Bad, aggressive, but not like super bad and not super aggressive. Who knows? But that was a nice outcome. That was nice. I enjoyed that. That was fun. <clears throat> There's no juice at this table anymore, or not enough juice, so we're just going to leave. And that's just how we do it. People won't like it very much, you know, like, but we've, we've, that's it, we've gone to the table, we've, like, with the intention of trying to, like, felt the, the one obvious whale, we've achieved that. So, that's it, we don't, there's no honour in poker, there's honour and integrity in terms of, like, be good as your word, don't cheat, all these things, but when it comes to game selecting and stuff, I mean, I've been criticised for it down the years by many, 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 many people, and that will continue to happen, and some people won't like what I've just done there. I give zero fucks. Um, I play this game for fun and for, to make some money. I don't play it to, like, battle regulars and pay a bunch of rake in games that I'm not even sure I've got a positive win rating. Uh, so if people don't like my methods, then they're yeah, good for you. I don't blame you for not liking them, but don't think you'll ever change my mind or like by criticizing me it will make me change your ways because it literally never will we're back at this time we've already been at because it's looking good again and um, i think we're probably going to be close to 45 minutes are we i think we are maybe even gone over 44 minutes that's perfect we're not in a hand at the minute so we're going to wrap it up for this video i hope you guys have enjoyed it i think it's been like one of the best videos i've made for a while in terms of uh the action we've had and the things that have happened and um 
hopefully how I've analysed the situation. So yeah, really enjoyed making this video. I think it's been really good. Hope you guys enjoy it too. Um, don't forget to hit the like. Don't forget to get in touch with me or the guys at Pop Bombers if you want to get in these clubs. And um, yeah, take care everybody. Stay safe. Uh, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye for now.